Hello again, everybody. Back again with another video today. We're looking at Plasma 518 LTS beta, which is available for testing on Kubuntu. You have the choice of either using 19.10 and adding a PPA, or you can try the 2004 daily build and update that system if you're already running it. And you will get the 518 LTS beta, which is as they call out here, 517.9. I am on 19.10. So if we look at my system details, so it's 5.17.9, 5.66 KDE Frameworks, QT version 5.12.4, and the kernel's 5.3 on 19.10. If you're on 20.04, it's a 5.4 kernel. I was running 20.04 on hardware, but ran into some hardware issues, and I'm not sure if that's the latest kernel or what's going on, but I couldn't adjust my screen brightness. The control would show up on the screen, and the slider would move up and down, but the brightness didn't change. So I saw that, and I saw a couple other little things, and so I just reverted back to 19.10 for now so I could test Plasma specifically and not worry about the complexity of adding in 20.04, and I'll get back to trying that in probably a few weeks and see where they are. But for now, I'm on 19.10, so what I did was I added this PPA, and the command line itself does the update and the full upgrade, so... So running that command will update your system to 5.17.9. And once you reboot, you'll be in the new version of Plasma. Now, in terms of testing, what they're suggesting we do here is to run through general test cases. So does Plasma start as normal, no apparent regressions, anything like that? Obvious things that things aren't working. You know, you click something and you get an error, all that sort of stuff. I found a few things that I've reported already, and uh, I'll go through those, but also general workflow. So just use the system like you normally would, do the tasks that you normally would, and if you run into anything that looks strange or errors, anything like that, they'd like to have that reported back. And then specific tests. If you look at the change log, there's a tremendous amount of stuff, and then they have it broken out into categories. So, you know, Blue Devil for Bluetooth, Breeze for the theme, the GTK theme, discover itself. So, I mean, this just goes on and on and on. If you have a specific thing that you've been having problems with or an area that's interesting to you, then this is a great way to come in and actually look at specific details. And if you just want to throw in and do some testing, this is also a great way to just find specific areas to focus on and take a look at. So the, the example they give here, you'd identify an item with user-facing changes, clock combo box instead of tri-state checkbox. So just picking out specific things, looking at them, general use, and then the difference between where you would report them. So if you have any questions and you're not sure, you can always jump on IRC or Telegram. The Kubuntu support group, the folks that are in there, there's a great team of people that are always there answering questions. And so if you had a bug that you found and you weren't sure, is this something with packaging in Kubuntu or is it something that's upstream in KDE, they'd probably be able to direct you where to go to log that. And they're saying here that if it's a packaging bug, you know, something specific to Kubuntu, then launchpad.net is where you could go to log a bug. And if you think it's something in KDE, then you can go to bugs.kde.org and look there. And usually what I'll do is if I find something, I go in and I look first to see if it's already been reported. The assumption is that if I found it, and in many cases, I'm not digging that deep or trying really odd things, so if I find something, in many cases, I'm assuming others did. So I'll just go and search. And if I see it there, then great. What I can do then is to add and just say that, uh, that I've seen it as well. So if we look here, this is a bug that I found on, if you go to add an item under K menu. So if I K menu edit, if I go here, edit applications, this shows you all the, everything that's in the uh, launcher menu. And so if I can't come in here, I was trying to add a new entry. So if I say new item, and I was specifically trying to add Telegram desktop, when I do that and click OK, you notice that it crashes. You can report the bug and then go through this process, but it was actually not able to actually get through as a bug. So it, it's got the backtrace, and it shows all of the sort of stuff that was happening in the background. And if you click Next, unfortunately, it does not contain enough information to automatically report. So what I did was I went and looked and found a bug that was already there. It was reported by a user. It's the same exact issue I'm having. They happen to be on 5.17.8. So it was a previous release, but it was also in this beta 
or in this uh, 518 series. And so I just basically said, hey, I can confirm this and this is my system. And then I also attached the uh, crash log that was in there. And so hopefully that gets a little more visibility and that way they can see that it's more than just one person and that it is, at least for me, re repeatable every single time. So every time I go through that step, I just showed it, it results in it crashing. So uh, yeah, so that's how you can test and give back. And this was definitely a KDE bug. So that's why I went to bugs.kde.org. I actually haven't tried it on Neon and that's something I might do just to check. So I have KDE Neon installed in a virtual machine as well. And I should, I can easily go in there and check as well. And I actually will probably do that now. I found another issue with the driver manager where if you either just go to driver manager or you can also get to it under the system settings menu, it just, it doesn't do anything. It just sits here and I let it sit for probably 30 minutes just to see, you know, if it was doing something or would, or would at least result in an error or, or something. And it never did. So I went and found that this is a quite an old report, but it's a report that's there and it did have a relatively recent report on there. So I just stuck in that I'm trying it on 518 beta, noticed it, but I also noticed that it doesn't work on 1910 for me as well. I've never used it before. I, w I hadn't tried it and I just thought I would as part of my testing. So it looks like it may not even have anything to do with, with the, the new beta. It may just be an underlying issue with Kubuntu. And again, specifically because this is Kubuntu, that's why I went to Launchpad instead of bugs.kde.org. I did a stream earlier in the week, so I'm not going to go through all of the new features here. I'll link to this page, the change log and the announcement from Kubuntu so that you can take a look at this yourself. I really just wanted to give you an idea of what's out here, the fact that you can get it on 19.10 or on 2004 testing. It's interesting to come and see the new features. If you can find things and report back, seeing any bugs that they, I don't know if they mentioned it here, but somewhere they had said, you know, the importance of this again is that it's, it's an LTS release. It's something we're going to be living with for many years to come. Yeah, down here, I think they get into that. And essentially, if you use KDE, if you use Kubuntu, if you like the Plasma desktop and you have, you know, an hour or two to just kind of click around and try some things, you can do it in a virtual machine. That's absolutely fine. If you can do it on hardware, great, all the better. But if you have the time to do it, I think it's fun to do, interesting to do. And, and ultimately, it's helpful. And, you know, we talk about ways that we can give back when I'm not a developer. I'm not in here changing any of the code, but I can at least test it and give them feedback. So if you have the time to do it, then I'm sure they would appreciate it. And I think it leads to a better outcome for everybody involved. And it's a small thing that I can do and I enjoy this stuff anyway. So why not? Right. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Like and subscribe if you do. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.